Ladies and gentlemen, a warm, warm welcome from my side. It's my pleasure to be here today. I want to give you a little view in how to use software easily for machine vision and doing this by looking a little bit into the future. I come from Ambitech. My name is Wolfgang Eckstein and I'm one of the two managing directors. My main responsibility is looking into the market and see how things might evolve, specifically how we should develop our products further. Now we want to have a little look into the magic glass and we are wondering how could machine vision look like in a couple of years. And I bet it will be a little different from what we have nowadays. And I want to explain this by giving you two examples where things are changing currently and for sure this will have a serious influence on what we are doing right now. The first thing I see is that machine vision uh, has something which influences it by big companies on the market. And I want to explain this with a well-known thing that already happened a couple of years ago, and that is how the price of consumer cameras influenced the price of industrial cameras. So a couple of years ago, everybody of us was happy Assume you're a camera manufacturer and you had been selling BGA cameras for 5,000 euros and you could go to a customer and present the camera to him and you spend one day with him explaining all the features and then there were consumer cameras coming and you paid like 50 euros for that and it's faster, higher resolution with more features and your customers are wondering why do I have to pay 10 times the amount of money for what they get from you? So, and as you know, things changed in the meantime and companies were struggling, optimizing the production process, optimizing everything they did to lower the price and to compete with what is going on on the mass market. Still, of course, prices are higher for various good reasons, but think of yourself as being a sales company. You dramatically had to change what you're doing compared to what you did in the past. Something similar is also happening currently on the software side. So far, there were like 5, 10, 20 engineers and everybody was happy about what they are doing. They made neat algorithms and then we go out to the customer and present that. Now what happens is that there are big players to name Google here, to name Amazon, Facebook, whosoever is working in this field and they're doing really nice algorithms. And this goes back not to our industry first, but to the people outside. So it's our kids, it's ourselves working with this technology, not in industry. We use it every day. So everybody of you has a high performance computer with a high performance camera and most likely use that functionality a couple of days, always. And this changes how we think of machine vision. So when you use something, in this field, you're not used to configuring parameters. You do not want to make a camera calibration or something. You just take the camera out and you do something. So having a barcode reader in such a device, you go to a convenience store and you want to get some information about that. Just one of the thousands of examples we have in this field, you get it out, you use it. You do not bother about illumination. You do not bother about focal length. Whatever parameters you could have, you just use it and it's working. So having these two ideas in mind, it's, you're wondering how should you react on that? And there might be a good time now to really react and say, no, things will proceed as they have been always. It's our industry and we don't bother about what's going on outside. But we have to be aware of a couple of things you might know for sure. Industry has different requirements. It makes no sense to use the whatsoever smartphone and go to industry and hold it in the factory floor. It might not last that long. Just one thing to mention when you use your whatsoever, let's say, iPhone, and it forces you to make updates every 20 days. That's horrible for industry. So whatever we do in the way they introduced, we have to adapt it 
so that it fulfills the requirements. You might have to have a product which lasts for 10 years. 10 years, not 20 days. And it's very easy to have something which is easy to configure, but you might have to control it more precisely in machine vision. Ideas we did. One technology coming up, very nice, is deep learning. And everybody who tried that realized that it's not that easy. I had been talking to a couple of customers and most of them tried it and all of them failed. So it's very nice what you can do with it, with it if you're an expert. So we have to transfer this technology into the means of using them in industry. To give an example here of two versions of our software, on the left side was the reading result in the previous version and the right side the current version using deep learning technology. And it, was, it involves, of course, the reading capability, but it also involves capability of separating characters. So if they are touching, you have to do more than just using a threshold and connected component analysis. Something else, people do not want to bother about parameters also in machine vision, they do not want. What you see here is the result of an OCR applied to different images without changing parameters. It's just finding the text and not something else which is not text at all. Or something just for convenience, you're rotating your ROI and it fails reading it, well, the system should automatically detect the ROI is rotated and it should adapt the reading capability relative to the ROI without special rotation of the image. So to finalize that, I want to give you a little idea how this could look into a real, or how it looks in a real software and how it feels to work with that. What I have here, I have started one of our two products, which is going into this trend, making use quite easy. And I already loaded a couple of images, which are displayed here. You see it's three lines of text. And let's assume we have to read that. So the first thing we have to do is we have to choose a tool being capable of reading. I did that. It introduces this tool, connects it with the previous one. And now we have to make the setup for reading. Now there's the little difference in between industry and consumer market. In consumer market, we would expect that it's reading everywhere. In industry, we do not want to have that because there might be somewhere text we're not interested in. So we want to focus the system on the part of the image which is of interest. We take, for example, the mouse, move the mouse on top of the text, and it immediately recognizes, okay, there is text. This might be what you want to have. So you click, and it determines the size, the width, and the height of the characters, makes an ROI around and says, okay, you want to read that. And the lower part, you see the result of the reading. And actually, there had only been two parameters which were detected automatically, and that's the width and the height of the characters. Now, you might be happy with that, or you could say, well, I want to read the whole text so you can modify, if you want, your ROI. Let's go like that. We want to have the three lines of code. And then you press run. And it's doing the job. So of course, it has to be flexible, adapting the parameters accordingly. If it's getting lighter, darker, whatsoever, to do that. We could try to make it a little more tough. What you saw, I extended the ROI a little higher. There's a logo. And first of all, it seems there could be like three characters in the logo. And actually, it starts reading the three things. When you look on the lower side, it reads, reads in this case, 6M7. It actually, does not really make sense. If you look at the right side, the score for this reading is zero. So it's doing some reading if you enforce it to do, but it tells you don't use it. So this should be the kind of feedback you require also in industry because it's not just the capability to read, 
but it's something you have to rely on to know how is the status. This brings me to the end. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>